hi everyone welcome back to my channel i am miss preppy pearl for anyone who's new here and to my lovely subscribers already thank you so much for coming back and tuning in i really appreciate you guys and i also appreciate lately like a lot of the comments that i've been getting really really love you guys for that and appreciate you guys for that thank you so so much so just as i mentioned in my last video i'm going to be discussing the courses that i took during my masters in health informatics kind of like if you don't want to go out and go get a full masters maybe these are some courses or some projects you can work on to show your skill set in this area but i just want to go ahead and get into it so please stay for the longevity of this video i hope you guys enjoy i don't want to start off by discussing some of the things that i mentioned in my last video if you want to like skip this whole segment just you know go to the part that you really care about like the courses in my last video i discussed the type of programming languages that you might want to pursue or learn in order to be in the health informatics field and i also mentioned kind of like the platform that i use in order to learn these different programming languages so i mentioned coursera but i totally forgot that i use another big one and i actually started off with this one before i moved to um, coursera but it's called udemy i absolutely love udemy because udemy offers a lot of free courses in these different programming languages so if that is something that you want to consider and i'm always the person to be let's be cost effective so to be cost effective i would definitely recommend udemy use udemy first um and then if you want to get like the actual certifications or stuff like that you can move into like coursera or other accredited organization or institutes that can uh, provide that certificate but again don't think you really need a certificate as long as you can learn and apply it that is really what matters the most application is always the so best. let's go ahead and talk about the courses that i took um during my master's earning my master's in health informatics um so for um clarity or just to remind you guys i got my master's in health informatics from mercer university it was a two-year program but i did mine in a year and a half because i just went ahead and did it like full time at mercer focuses a lot on systems um, and interoperability so I would say across the board, a master's in health informatics, they have a lot of like similar parts, um, no matter which institution or university you go to, but they do differ in what they focus on. Some masters in health informatics focus a lot on like the AI or AI ethics side of things, and then some focus on more of like the stats side of things and then some focus on like the public health side of things so my program specifically focused on the systems and interoperability which was really important to me because i noticed that one of the biggest gaps in healthcare is just making sure that systems can communicate effectively with one another in order to produce and provide great patient care so that is what my program was focusing on and i absolutely loved it so let's go ahead and actually talk about some of the main courses that i took i'm not going to go over everything that is something you can definitely go and search on google to see in a thorough and exhaustive list of all of the courses that i took but i'm going to go over like four major ones because i felt like these were the most important to me and helped me the most so yeah let's go ahead and get into it the first one i'm going to mention that i felt was like just really important to me that i um the course that i took was telehealth so it was a course dedicated to telehealth um um, and why this is important to me is one, as you guys already know, technology is here to stay and especially in the healthcare field. And as more and more people are in a more remote type of lifestyle, telehealth medicine is something that is here to stay. So because I understand that, I was like, I really want to take a course and understand what that involves and how that can be applied in a healthcare setting. So my course, of course, it gave you like the overview of telehealth. It also branched into different types of like telemedicine and whatnot. But I like this class as well because it gave me a hands on approach. So we had a project where we actually had to basically implement our own telehealth technology or telehealth medicine type of device. Of course, we didn't actually structurally build it or whatnot, but it was helpful because it first showed us, OK, to first analyze the population that this telehealth 
um, this telehealth platform or whatnot is for. So you first have to assess, you have to understand who's your population, how will this affect them, how will this help them. Then also involving other like key stakeholders that are involved in the process, such as like the doctors, um, so the providers, the nurses, other clinical and medical staff. And so with that, was able to do that and then got into the more technical components of, okay, this is how you develop this telehealth platform or technology, how to implement it, a bit of change management because a lot of people forget that yes you can implement something but you also need the adoption from everyone so a bit of change management also comes into play. So that was that course. I absolutely loved it. Of course I didn't explain everything that was in it but that encompasses like the gist of that course for me. The second big one that I really loved a lot, um, it was called the Clinical Decision Support Systems, but um, it was that course. And why I like this because there are a lot of different types of systems that actually aid physicians, providers, and other healthcare professionals in making good decisions for their patients and because of that again i always recognize the importance of certain things because that is like very much front facing in my opinion because again most people as a patient yourself you're gonna most times take what your doctor says so in my opinion these systems have to be able to first be making like safe and um, effective clinical decisions, so supporting the decision making of the physicians, but also just making sure that they're operating at their full efficiency. So this course, again, involved understanding what clinical decision support systems do, how they are integrated into different types of interfaces, how they support what goes on in the back end. So that's where I would say that like XML, the JavaScript and other things like that also come into play in regards to that and so there's so many different parts of that but that is a course I absolutely loved it taught me so much on how things are utilized to make decisions and how again they are built so a lot of these things are built with different types of like processing that can identify trends or identify patterns and then make decisions based off of that so again absolutely love that course something i would recommend if you can do and possibly if your program offers that but just personally for me i absolutely love that course i learned so much and yeah i use it rel i use it sometimes but either way i know i can i'll be using it a lot more in my future the next course that i took that i enjoyed a lot was interoperability standards so Prior to me coming into my master's, like I've heard the term interoperability, but I didn't quite understand it. And so this course, I really wanted to first just understand what it was. So it was just for me, just like a basic understanding type course. But then being in the course, it taught me so much more that I honestly use even now. Interoperability, just think of it uh, as the way in which different systems can effectively exchange data. That's the best way I can explain it. But yeah, that's what interoperability is. And this is important because their different systems use their own language. So a nice example I can give you here is say you have one person who speaks one language and the other person speaks another language. What happens is you have someone in the middle who can interpret what this person's saying and deliver it to this person. And so interoperability does that there are different types of systems that do that process in between systems and so this helps with again effective communication between the systems making sure that the right data is being mapped from the source to the target absolutely love this course again because it just taught me so much and how to be able to do that and recognize that and again a bit of coding there in order to write some of these codes you have to again effectively make sure that it'll be interpreted correctly in the target system and so that was really fun for me i absolutely love that course and that is one course i would say that if your master's doesn't offer it try to find the course that incorporates this in some way or form of course across the board in health informatics most health informatics they will touch on this but really make sure you understand this understand like the specs of interoperability understand the actual regulations with interoperability because there are standards that are used across the world so make sure you're familiar with what are those standards that help with effective um, communication and data exchange look that up understand it 
and apply it where you can. Last but not least, it's honestly two in one. So they're two separate courses that I took, but I kind of lumped them together because they all had similar aspects. But the first one is risk assessment, and the other one is healthcare software requirement specification. These two together are important to me. So one thing I'm really big on, and just in general, before I make a decision or do anything, I'm I'm always going to do like a risk analysis. Like how how risky is this thing? And I think a lot of times in the healthcare world, especially how fast paced the healthcare world can be sometimes. A lot of people do not take the necessary time to assess the risks that can be associated with a different type of application. It's one thing to be like, oh yes, this this um, application or this system or this device that we implement will do X, Y, Z for us. but that's all great and dandy but you also should assess the risks that are associated with this as well because at the end of the day it's the lives of patients that are at risk and that is what i care about a lot a lot of my decisions are based off of how will this affect the patient how will this affect the end user and so those two courses help me understand okay these are the specifications for a different type of uh, application or software that's being implemented understanding also what the risks are associated with that how will it cause problems if there are problems associated with how will we mitigate those problems and so those are just a few of the courses that i took if you really want to know some of the other ones that i took again google is your best friend so take a look search up <laughs> um search that up but if you want me to discuss anything else or maybe you want me to discuss more or have any questions please let me know but that's just a few that i have as always i'm going to continue with this health informatics series until i guess i run out of ideas but can you really run out of ideas i don't know yeah in the meantime as always if you have any questions please let me know and i'm always here to answer them like i truly am here to help anyone who wants to enter this field because like me i didn't have a lot of guidance into this field and i don't want anyone else to not have the guidance i didn't have so here to help but until next time i will see you guys later bye